Uh, hopefully everyone found a seat. I know it's packed in here. Uh, so this is Gently Down the Stream, and um, today I'm hoping to kind of introduce you to the stream module if you've not checked on it before. Uh, if you've heard of it um, and you're not sure when to use it, maybe we'll go into some pros and cons, some, some times to use it, maybe some times to avoid it, and also um, kind of compare it with the enum module. Uh, so first thing is um, I want you to look at this picture. We've got, an, this isn't very nice, you know, there's a little bit of water coming down this little waterfall. It's a nice little stream, right? Uh, it looks like a, a place you'd want to spend an afternoon, maybe sitting on that bench or something. Uh, but if we look at that water, it's, it's pretty gently flowing, right? It's, it's nothing too crazy. It's, um, it's very nice, right? So then we move to this picture, and the water is getting a little more rough, a little crazier, a little more water moving through the image. Um, but, you know, it looks like a nice autumn day, and you might want to spend some time on the sidelines there. It looks like some cool mountains on the, on the left over there uh, with some rocks and stuff. So still not a crazy amount of water, but still a pretty big amount of water. And then we move to this image, where uh, I, I'm not sure where this is, uh, to be honest, but it looks really cool. I want to go there. Uh, you got the really cool mountains in the background with snow, and then you got these nice trees. And, of course, the water flowing through is probably no longer a stream anymore, maybe, you know, a, a river. It's getting, it's getting larger. Um, but you got these huge boulders in the way, uh, so there's still a lot of water moving through, and it's kind of rough. And so we look at these things, and we don't know where exactly these streams and rivers are flowing to, uh, and it could be something to an image like this. It could be where this nice little stream is going to go to this cliff and then tumble down. And um, if you were perhaps floating on this stream in an inner tube or something, and you went over that edge, you would not survive to make it under that little bridge under there, right? That's a pretty big fall. I don't know how deep it is at the bottom there. It could be two feet. It could be you know, 30 feet. I don't know. Uh, but that's not something you want to go over. Now, this isn't exactly uh, Jeffrey's show and tell his favorite stream slides. Uh, so keep those in mind as we're going to go through uh, some of the things in stream. And I'll kind of go back to these images and, and try to um, make, it a little more, make, it, make it a little more sense as to why I, I showed these at the beginning. So let's go back to this one. The first thing I want to say is enum is awesome. So how many guys have written at least one line of Elixir code? OK, cool. I think everybody. So of these people, how many of you have written one line of Elixir code that has used something from the enum module? OK, yeah, the exact same hands up. So if you took the Venn diagram of the people who write Elixir and the people who have written something from the enum module, it's pretty much you know, 100%. They cover each other pretty well. Uh, the reason is is because in functional programming, you do a lot of things with collections and data transformation. And the enum module has a lot of functions in there that allow you to do that efficiently and well. And honestly, unless you're writing your own stuff, it's hard to avoid the enum module as you're working through some Elixir applications. So um, I love Enum. I thought it was really cool. Uh, some of the initial um, things I was doing as I was learning Elixir were things from um, uh, Exorcist I.O. And um, some of those things were trying to reproduce some of the things in the Enum module as an exercise. And that kind of gave me an appreciation of what was in there. Um, but as I became, uh, as I delved further into Elixir, um, I'd heard about this thing called the stream module and how uh, if you have a lot of data or if you're working with um, you know, large pipelines or things like that, you should probably use stream instead of enum uh, because it'll give you uh, some performance boosts and it won't take up as much memory and all this kind of stuff. So I was like, okay, cool. Well, I'm at the point now where I feel confident with enum enough that I'll, I'll try to check out stream and, um, and just kind of drop it in and see what happens. So the problem is with enum is large collections. So if you look at this, um, this early slide here, this is the small one, if we wanted to take uh, the snapshot right here, just this moment in time, and say we want to iterate on, on every little water molecule falling over that little waterfall, if we could even call it a waterfall, that little <laughs> waterfall. Um, if we wanted to do something with each one of those water molecules, I could, you know, we can conceivably carry all that in memory, right? It's not a whole lot of water, um, so we could operate on each one of those without you know, blowing up the universe with trying to store all that in memory. But then if you go to something like this, and we take this moment in time and try to do something on every water molecule falling over that, that's going to be more difficult. That's, that would be a large data set to try to operate over. Um, the problem, further problem is if we unpause this image and just let it flow, then water is just going to keep flowing over that waterfall until you know, the world ends or the, water, the stream dries up or something like that. But it's going to go on for potentially an infinite amount of time. So that's a lot of data. If we wanted to catch every one of those water molecules and do something with it as it came through, that would be very, uh, very hard to do with enum. 
So the problem is large data sets. And a solution, not maybe necessarily the solution, but a solution for that is to use streams. Um, a stream, even in the documentation, it says it could be, it uses, it's useful for large data sets and potentially infinitely large data sets. Um, so it's hard to think of what would be an infinitely large data set. Um, so let's change that wording to maybe like an indeterminately large data set. So let's say you've got a, a cool idea for a web program and um, you know the day it starts. Uh, you're going to launch it this day and you, you believe it's your baby and it's going to last forever. It's going to outlive the internet itself. And so the log files are going to just keep growing to an indeterminately large uh, file size unless you let the log rotate and be a, a good admin. Um, but let's say it just keeps growing and you want to do something on every little thing that comes to that log file, you want to do something with it. You want to operate on it. Um, so with enum, you'd have to wait until all that's done and then operate on that huge list. Uh, but in this case, you don't know when it's done. It could be infinitely large. Another example might be um, something like text analysis of a large book um, or uh, let's say you've got uh, sensors reading light, ambient light and uh, you put it on your roof and it's solar powered, you've got a nerves thing going and it's constantly feeding in data to your server and then the world blows up and that thing survives and it's, so it's infinitely giving you information from the sensor, right? So it's infinitely large data set. How do we operate on something like that? So I'm going to um, drop into an IEX session here and kind of demonstrate uh, some of the things with IE, uh, sorry, with enum and stream. So the beginning of this is going to be, uh, you guys have all used enum, so the beginning of this is going to be, I know how to use map, thank you very much, Jeffrey. Um, but bear with me and we'll, we'll kind of iterate on this a little bit. So I'm just going to create a, a quick little list here. Let's say code beam uh, SF. Okay, that's going to be our list we're going to iterate over. It's just a simple list, pretty small. Uh, first thing I want to do, is, uh, let's say we want to upcase each one of those uh, strings, okay? So that's easy, we just use enum.map and uh, we'd call you know, string.upcase and pretty easy, right? You guys have all done something like similar to that before. And we can take it one step further instead of upcase, let's say we want to take the graphemes of those and get each individual uh, letter of that, not sting. Okay, so we have a list of lists of each individual letter in those words. Not a big deal at all. But let's uh, do something to where we have a larger data set. So let's say we have a range between uh, 1 and 10 million, and we're going to take those integers and pipe them into uh, enum.map. And uh, for the ease of seeing, we're just going to call it to string on that from the integer. All right, I'm going to press enter. I hit enter. It's going to take a while because what it's doing is it's got to take each one of those integers and go through the range and bring them down into that first map. So we take that a step further like we did the last one and uh, let's pipe that now into the enum and we're going to take the graphemes of those. And I hit enter and now it's going to take a while. So if you had a website that was doing something with 10 million integers and you're doing something similar to this and um, your user was waiting on the result, the user is going to go somewhere else and buy something from somewhere else where you're going to get a little quicker response time, right? This is going to take a little while. Um, the problem is, and he here's what, I'm going, to, I'm going to kind of be one of those enums, okay? I'm going to be map. So I'm going to be at the bottom of the, of the pipeline here. I'm going to call it a pipeline. And at the very top, I can see 1 through 10 million integers. So that whole list at one time is going to go right down to the next, that first enum, right? And that first enum is going to go on that whole list and take it all in its head and say, with this whole list, I've got to operate on every one of these. So I've got it all in my memory. I'm going to take the, the one and turn that into a string. I'm going to take the two, turn that into a string, the three, the four, all the way to 10 million. And it's like, whew, I'm done with this huge list. I'm finished. And I'm going to pass it down. I'm going to force it down into the next enum area. And so now it goes to the enum.graphemes. And so now this time, this, this, this enum has to get all that in its memory and say, all right, now I've got to operate on each one of these items in the list before I pass the whole thing down to the user at the end. Okay? That takes a lot of computational power to get all that in memory, to operate over the whole list, and then push it down through this pipeline. So I thought, okay, cool. This is where streams are going to really save my hide, right? We need, we've got some, a lot of data. We've got a, a similarly long uh, pipeline, some, some computation that takes place. I'm going to drop in stream. And I heard that stream can be sort of a drop-in replacement for a lot of the enum functions. So I thought, well, let's do that. Let's just drop in uh, an enum, I'm sorry, stream instead of enum. So just like enum, stream has a map function. And uh, we'll take those integers and call it to string on them. And we're going to pipe that into stream.map and uh, do our string.graphemes. And I'm going to hit enter and watch how fast this is, okay? Which, like, first time I did that, I was like, well, where's my numbers? Where's my, where's my text? 
Um, so what it returns is not what I expected at all. It's this weird kind of data structure thing that has, you know, it's got um, enum in it, shows like what numbers we're operating over, and then it's got our funds. Um, I like the, we've got our funds list here. This is where we have our fund. But these are the functions that we've set up for our stream. So what stream is, is it's called lazy because it doesn't actually do anything until you request something from it. So what it's done here is it's set up the pipeline, but it's like, dude, I'm not doing anything because you don't need any of the numbers, right? So it's just sitting there waiting for you to do something to it. So how do you request something from it? How do you pull something down through that stream? So typically what you're going to be using is something, again, from the enum module. So whether that's a to list or a take or anything of, the, of that sort where you can actually request those, um, those numbers. So let's do that. So let's go ahead and kick that, that stream off. Uh, we got the stream. We're going to take it to string. We got the graph themes. And then I'm just going to call enum to list. And so I was like, OK, now I'm going to find the speed boost, right? So I hit enter, and I, I sit, and I'm like, well, this isn't, this isn't any better than what I did a minute ago when I did just enum. The problem is that at the very bottom, enum is requesting, again, every single item of that list. And so in this case, stream does not give you any benefit because you're still trying to get that entire list at the very bottom. And so this brings up the, the first real area where stream is going to make a huge difference. Not in necessarily long pipelines with many functions and large data sets, but when you only need a fraction of that data. Okay? So as soon as this finishes, I'm going I'm to do something else here. And it, it may seem like I'm crazy. Um, because I'm going to increase the 10 million number to something like 100 billion. Right? So we got, now we've got 100 billion numbers, and we'll be here until the keynote's over. Um, and you'll, you'll miss the party, and uh, we'll just be waiting for our numbers. In this case, this is taking a little longer than I was expecting, so I'm hoping it'll, it'll finish up here. Uh, but I'll tell you what, let's just kill it. Kill it? All right. So in this case, let's do one through uh, 100 billion. So we've got a lot of numbers coming through here. And we're going to stream uh, map integer to string. I'm going to pipe that into uh, stream.map string graphemes. And then at the very end, instead of an enum to list, I'm just going to do, I'm going to take four of them. Now that was fast, right? We still have a, a range of 10, 100 billion numbers waiting to be operated on, but we only requested four. So here's what's happening at the very bottom. Enum.take is basically shouting up to the first thing, all right, I need four items. And so the first item is dripped down. So that one kind of drips through the thing. So that only the one comes through, and it goes through the two string uh, map. And then the, the two strings like, all right, I know what I can do. I just need to do this one thing, and then I'm going to drop it through. So it's, it only does it once. It only does it for the one. And then drops it through to the graphemes. And the graphemes does it th its thing. And it, and it finally gets to enum uh, take four. And, and he's like, well, I need three more. And so the three others drop through. And enum says, all right, I'm done. And so stream's kind of like, you know, what about the other 99 billion that I set up for you? It's like, well, I don't need it. And so stream, again, turns it back to its lazy self. And it's like, all right, cool. We don't do anything with them. I'm just going to you know, go back and do nothing. I'm going to be lazy again. So that's where um, things can be really, really faster in stream. So let's take a look at some benchmarks here. So um, as I mentioned, when I first heard about streams, I heard that it's good for uh, large data sets or possibly long pipelines. Okay? So let's, let's do this. So I've got four functions. And at the very end, I'm calling enum.toList. And in that function, uh, I'm going to pipe in through like 1,000 integers like we did a minute ago. So enum um, is able to process one point, almost 1 1.8 thousand of them a second, while stream is only able to do just under 1,200 a second. So stream is actually one and a half times slower than enum. I was like, well, that's not what I expected. So all right, well, let's, let's try 100,000 items. Maybe we'll just have to up the size. Well, in this case, stream is still one and a half times slower. I was like, OK, well, maybe we need something like 10 million items. And again, stream is still 1.2 times slower. It's like, well, well, that's odd. OK, so maybe it wasn't just the size of the data set. Maybe it's the, the, the length of the pipeline. So I thought, well, instead of four functions, let's pipe it through eight different functions. And so let's call those same thing. So the first one was 1,000. And here, again, stream is 1.1 times slower. I was like, OK, well, that's getting a little bit better. Uh, for 100,000 items, stream is almost one time slower. It's almost about the same. And then for 10 million items, again, stream is about the same. And honestly, the deviation in the test is enough that you could probably just drop in stream uh, for enum, and it would be similar timings. Thanks. So why is that? Why is stream sometimes slower than enum? Well, the reason is because when you have enum, it doesn't have to set up all the stuff that stream sets up. So if you remember, when we pressed enter and we didn't call enum on that stream pipeline, we had that weird data set looking thing. That takes some computational power and some memory to, to create and then operate on and through. Uh, so when um, we're not, 
when we don't need it and it, we're actually need it to create it, it's going to be slower on our computation. So that's when I was like, okay, well, I need to be careful then about when I use stream and make sure that I'm using it in the right circumstances. So it kind of depends on, on when you need it. So let's take a look at one more thing. It's like, well, now I've got eight functions. And at the end of it, instead of enum.toList, I'm going to say enum, let's take 10 of them, okay? So for 1,000 items, now we're seeing some, some difference here. So stream, uh, enum is actually 132 times slower than stream in this case. Previously, you know, we were looking at you know, one and a half times slower. A stream was about one and a half times slower. Now we're getting into big numbers, like 130 times, 132 times slower. That's, that's slower. For 100,000 items, enum is 13,000 times slower. And for 10 million items, enum is almost 2.4 million times slower than stream in this case. That's, again, because stream doesn't have to have that whole uh, amount of the whole list in its memory and operate on each one of them. All right, so let's take a look at um, one other thing in IEX to kind of demonstrate this a little further. I'll put that at the top here. All right, so let's take our list again. This time we're going to have uh, four items. Let's say code, beam, uh, SF, and elixir. Okay, so that's our list. We're going to do kind of the, the similar thing we did at the very beginning where we're going to upcase these things and then take the graphemes. Uh, so let's pipe our list uh, into map, I'm uh, sorry, enum.map. The first thing we actually want to do is, to demonstrate some things is we're going to call inspect on this. Pipe that into uh, enum uh, integer, no, sorry, string.upcase. We're going to pipe that into the inspect again to see what the, uh, the output is after it. And then we're going to do string.graphemes. And then finally, let's take, the la let's take three of those things. Um, take three. All right, so here we see the output of that. At the very beginning, we instantiated a list. Or not instantiated, but we've got a list here of four items. And um, the first thing we do is we're going to inspect each one of those. And we can see that code, beam, SF, and elixir all went through here, uh, one after the other, right? Then the next thing we do is we upcase them, okay, cool. And we inspect them, and we can see again, we've got code, beam, SF, and elixir upcase now. Kind of what you'd expect, right? Because each one of those is taking the entire list, operating on every one of the items, and then passing it through to the next section. And at the very end, we've got code, beam, and SF. So the elixir has dropped off at the very end here because we're just taking three. Now let's see what that, the difference is when we use stream. So we've got that, that same list, and instead of um, enum.map, let's call stream.map. And we're going to inspect them. Uh, then we're going to upcase them. Uh, we're going to inspect them again. And then uh, we're going to take the graphemes. And then we'll take three of them. Uh, Enum.take3. Right, in this case, you can see the we've got code coming through on its own. And then it's upcased before we see beam. That's because that first thing just dripped all the way through the pipeline before the second one even started. Uh, same thing with Beam, same thing with SF, and in this case, Elixir doesn't even come through at all because we never asked for it. Enum only needs three items, and once we got the third, it said, I'm done. No need to go any further. So this is really where um, Stream is going to take you to, um, to your really benefit for using Stream, basically. But I would say that um, you should probably do some benchmarks on, on the code where you think it might be beneficial, because sometimes it may not be, because uh, it surprised me a couple times. So take a look at that. It depends on your code. But hopefully this will give you some sort of um, idea of when it can be beneficial to you. Uh, that's it for today. I'm running out of time. Uh, but I'm Jeffrey. I'm writing Phoenix in Action uh, for Manning. Um, there's a 40% off coupon I can give you uh, for this weekend for CodeBeam, uh, for any Manning book, not just Phoenix in Action. Um, so come see me after that. I'll give you that. And um, I blog at JeffreyLessel.com. Uh, usually it's, it has been Ecto stuff over the past. Uh, it's dropped off a little bit while I'm writing my book. Uh, my writing mind is going to that instead. Uh, but here's some other places you can contact me. So thank you guys so much, and let me know if you have some questions afterwards. Thanks very much, Jeffrey.